Hey DIYers, today we're gonna to be doing a little hot water heater maintenance, specifically an electric hot water heater. You have a gas hot water heater, by what I'm doing needs to be done on yours, but how you do it's probably gonna be a little different. So the issue that got me to have to do this was I noticed the last couple of days my hot water wasn't as hot and I didn't have as much of it. And I thought, oh no, I gotta have a new hot water heater. And these hot water heaters, this is a 40 gallon, uh, an electric is about 500 bucks or so to replace. Now, if it was gas, they start at 700 and go up. So I didn't wanna do that. And I do remember when I bought this house that the seller told me that he'd had to replace three of these. Well, I understand why now, because the water here is what they call very hard water. Got a lot of calcium in it. And you'll see what I mean here in a minute. That calcium buildup winds up going right in your hot water heater. And the reason is, is all hot water heaters, whether they're gas or electric, have what they call an anode. It's a rod. This one happens to be magnesium. Some of them are aluminum. Rod that goes in here and its job is to collect those minerals so that it doesn't gum up your hot water heater and cause it to go bad early. I'm overpowering mine and you'll see why here in a minute. So to flush this, it's not gonna be as easy as it sounds. It's not a matter of just dump it and it cleans itself out. Believe me, I've already dumped it once and it didn't clean it out. So what we gotta do is a little prep work first. First thing you wanna do always unplug it. It's electric. I'm not gonna really talk anymore about gas because it's gonna be different. And then next, we're gonna remove these panels. Now my electric water heater happens to have two controllers, an upper and a lower thermostat and element. So we're gonna take the covers off and you'll see why we have to do that. So you just need a small little Phillips screwdriver. This happens to be a number one Phillips. Side note, you may see that there's a lot of stuff in the way. If your garage is like mine, it's more of an extra storage room than it is a real garage. So we're having to work around. So we're just gonna take these screws out. I'm gonna take the bottom one out first. Do not lose these screws, by the way. And this part is very easy, don't be scared. And just like that. I'm gonna put the screws right inside here. Put this in here. I'm gonna take it out methodically so I know how to put it back. Went on like this. I'm gonna set it down like that so I know that this is towards the top and that's how it goes back in. Now I've already had to take this off once, but if you've never taken yours off, there'll be this little bar across here, this little plastic bar. We'll pop that out because it's really just a retaining bar and it doesn't matter. So you take the foam out. This is the top piece, the bottom piece out. And this bar sits right in here like this. And you can just take a screwdriver in your hand and pop it out. Next, this cover has to come off. It kind of lifts out and up. And so you know, there is a difference between an upper and a lower. This upper thermostat is very big and it's got a reset button right there. And this heating element is also different in the upper than it is the lower in this particular unit. First, before we go any further, I need to drain this hot water tank. So this is the valve to drain the hot water heater. I've got a bucket sitting under here just to catch any drips. As you see, it sits on this elevated platform. I believe that is code and it has to be 18 inches. But as you see, it's kind of deteriorating and falling apart because of the water leaks and the water changes and everything else. And some of you may be saying there should be a collection pan under here for when it leaks. I agree but they never had one. I'm not gonna put one in now. So basically you're gonna need to get your hose. This one I believe is a three quarter inch hose. I say that because you can get three quarter and five eighths inch hoses. Now what I need to do is I need to go inside, open up some faucets so I can get a vacuum so the water will drain. Oh crap. I need to turn the water off before we go any further. Now my water system happens to be a PEX unit and this is actually a manifold. Now I've realized not all houses with PEX have a manifold which is too bad because I really like it. Now the downfall, the dummies that put this in didn't put a shutoff valve up there on that hot water heater like there should be so I can just shut the water off up there and be done. So instead I've got to shut the whole house off in this case and I'll show you we've got a little plan so in case you have to go to the bathroom you can still use the toilet. All right water shut off. All right open this valve. I haven't opened up any faucets yet. And I want to show you that absolutely no water is coming out of this. As you see, I got a hose running down the driveway here and you see zero, absolutely zero water coming out of there. So now I'm going to open up some faucets. Another thing you can do too is open up the pop-off valve and that'll help get some vacuum in there so it'll start to drain. You see, water's now coming out. See how little flow there is? That should be running like a madman. It's because I'm about plugged up. So what I'm gonna do, is I'm gonna catch that water in these two buckets and I'll save it. That way if I have to flush the toilet, I can flush it once and I can fill the tank up and I can flush it twice or three times if I need. So here's what our plan's gonna be. I'm gonna let this drain down where I think it's far enough. I'm gonna take this heating element out and then I'm gonna take this heating element out. And I'm taking this heating element out so I can get in there and try and get this flushed out. Because basically the bottom of this, I already know when I was doing some service on it yesterday, that from the bottom to almost 
the bottom of this element packed full of sediment. That's what we need to do is get all that out. Now this valve here, when I get this out, you'll see it doesn't have a straight hole through it. So it's not like I can take this off and get in there and root around and flush it that way. Already tried that. Been with the Home Depot. I got a plastic PVC shutoff valve. Then I got a six inch extension pipe from the sprinkler aisle and put them together. I would love to leave this on here permanently, but I don't know if this is rated for hot water. And that's the reason I'm not. So I don't want to leave this in and it start to leak because it gets so hot. So unfortunately, hopefully once I get it all cleaned out, it won't matter. We'll put this back in. All right, while that's draining out, I got some things I need to make here. And on a side note, it's draining very, very slow. So it could take quite a while. And I've already tried one little trick to see if I could speed it up, didn't really help. So I need to make some sort of tools to get in through that hole where that element is so I can scrape around and get that stuff loosened up and get it to flush out through there. What I've got here is two pieces of aluminum. This one's a half inch wide by eighth inch thick flat aluminum and this is a solid rod of aluminum that is a quarter inch. I'm going to bend these in a way so they'll go in there and I can do this. From the bottom of the tank to the top of that element is four inches so I'm going to bend this at about three and three quarters. The whole tank itself is about 20 inches deep. The last little bit I'm going to bend up for a handle. Do the same thing with this and I'll show you what we're gonna do with this wire. So what I've done is I've taken that wire and looped it back and forth four times and it's 48 inches long and then we're going to twist this up. I may not need this but I'd rather make it now and not need it than get started and go crap I need it and have to come and stop and do this. So what I'm gonna do is just take a series of bends kind of bend it into a five prong or hope five prong kind of a flowery end there and then bend it like those and handle on the end and kind of use it to rotor rooter in there. So we've run into a major hiccup and that is as you see here there's zero to very little water coming out of that hose. Now what I've done is I've taken the hose on my shop back and turned it around and blown air up in here to try and blow it loose to see if it'd come out. Didn't really do it. When I get this off you'll see there's just a itty bitty hole that this water drains through. It doesn't do like this where it's got a big hole all the way through for stuff to come out which it ought to. So what I'm going to try and do and this could go so wrong so quick because I could have 40 gallons hot water on me. I'm going to try and take this fitting out and put this one in and hope that there's very little water coming through here and get it out that way. If as one I'm taking this off I notice All it's right, dripping a go. bunch of water. I'll abandon that and I'll try uh, one other thing. That went better than I thought. All right, I got the mess all cleaned up. This is all set. You saw all that grunge that come flooding out of there. That's what's in here. I've got the hose hooked up to this backwards. I'm going to open this up and we'll see how nasty that water is it coming out. What I've noticed and what you may hopefully will see is yeah it'll come out real nasty at first and all of a sudden it's clean. But when I show you inside here and you see all that's in there you're going to be like oh my god why would you drink that water. So let's open this up. I'm going to put this bucket under here just in case for any leak. All right we got a little coming out but not like I'd like. See how clean that is? Well time for plan B. So here's what I'm going to attempt to do. I've got the hose that's hooked to the hot water heater here. I've got another hose hooked to the outside faucet. I've got a shutoff valve here. I'm going to turn the water on, open this up, try and blow water through that end, bust that loose, shut it back off, and see if we can get this flowing. Now I went in the house and shut all the faucets off because I don't want any of this back nasty water going through them. The only valve I'm going to have open is the uh, pop-off valve. I'll go turn the water on. When I turn this on, it's going to run here and it's going to fill into the tank. But with that pop-off valve open, it'll overflow into there. All right, I'm going to shut this off and see how we did. Running a little faster anyway. See how clean that is? Kitty thinks it's clean enough to drink. Well, that did the trick. We're empty. I want you to see, is see how this thermostat here is shorter than the top one and this one doesn't have a reset button. And when I pull this out, same thing, take the screws loose, take the wires off, you'll see this one isn't a double like that top one is. Okay, here's where these little tools are going to come in. And here's that wire that I got. That's what I was afraid of. It may not fit in there. But that's okay. I'm going to go with this one first and just scoop and loosen this up. There's bottom, and I'm hoping to turn on the water and try and flush this stuff out. I have to be a little careful because over here is that anode, and I don't know, it comes down to about here, so I don't want to hit that and 
break it or some goofy thing. What I have to do is I have to put that element back in and plug this hole. I only have to put the bottom one in. Turn the water on, flush some water through there, close this valve off, we'll see what we get out. And if anybody out there watching happens to know, I wonder if you could dunk this in CLR and get all that stuff off or if it'd ruin it. All right, so this one's pretty easy to get back in. That top one's a little harder because it's heavier. I don't need to get too tight. I leave the top open so it gets vented. I'm going go in the house, shut off all the faucets. I'm gonna shut off the overflow valve. I want it all focused right here. Okay, water on. So nothing really runs out of there. I got this piece of rebar. See how that water cleans up? Okay, I'm gonna dump this. Basically, this is what it's gonna be. Dig this out, flush, try and get it out, and hopefully we get it clean. So using this flat bar, aluminum, I've gone in and gotten all the way to the back cleaned and raked forward on both directions. And it's all sitting right here at the valve. But as you see, nothing's really coming out. I've got a little water in there, not much, but nothing. That's all that comes out, water time. And what I'm gonna try to do while the water's running, see if I can get that to flush out. There it's flowing. Some of you might be wondering what I'm doing with this paint strainer. Well, I'm catching all that garbage. And that's how much we got out in that run because it was empty. And there's a lot more where that came from, unfortunately. Okay, I got what I could out. I used the hose to get the rest of it empty. it be empty enough. I can take this back out. And scrape around and see where we're at. I will say these little tools are working quite nice. You can feel bottom right there, sludge. Stick around, when we get done, I'll show you how much grunge we got out of here. That's what we want. Boy, this thing fills up really quick because I don't have the water on very long. And this is going on 15 gallons. Now, I don't know if these are glass lined and if so, okay, I'm scratching the glass, may make it worse. I'd rather do that than buy another hot water heater. So I have flushed the living snot out of this thing. I filled it up, I dump it, I take this rebar, ream around in there, get it down below the element level, go in there and dig. I finally found out just when I need to shut the water off that it's below the element level. You go in there and dig and dig and dig and have water in there to help push it out, flushed it out. This tool here, the flat bar, worked the best. Did use the round one a little bit. The other one I made, obviously I just screwed that up and made it too big, but this worked really well. And basically I just kept raking and raking until I couldn't pack anything in this hole and stop it up. Cause that's what would happen is I'd flush it and I'd rake stuff in there and and I'd pack the whole solid and it'd stop running. And I'd have to just take this rebar in there and bust it loose, have it start running again. And I'd just keep doing that and packing it and packing it. And I'm gonna show you how much I got out. It is a lot. So I've gotten it as far as I'm gonna go. Basically what I'm gonna do is I'm just checking that when I open this valve, water runs out and it runs out in a good stream like that. So I need to dump this out because I got to put back the other valve in here and take this out. And while I'm dumping that, I'll put together up here at the top. Everything's cleaned up, put back together and ready to go. So I used Teflon tape on this to put this in here because it'll do fine. I think it wasn't on hot water. It didn't matter. But you can see they've kind of got some blue stuff on there. Well, I went to the plumbing aisle and I got this true blue. I'm guessing that's the same stuff. It's basically pipe thread sealant, liquid sealant. God, this stuff is thick as snot. I wanna have this all ready to go when I pull that out because it's gonna have a little bit of water dripping out, I know. I've never used this stuff before, so. And this stuff is safe for potable water, meaning drinking water. Put this in and the valve shut off naturally. Now, before you turn your water back on, make sure you open up the pop-off valve and all the faucets in the house. The reason is, is there's a lot of air in these lines and as this fills up, it's gotta purge all that air out of there. Don't plug it in just yet until it gets, 
you know, at least halfway full. Got the hot water heater all put back together. Got it filled up. There's no leaks. In fact, I gave it a little time to heat the water up. Got plenty of good hot water. Looks clean. And one thing I noticed, it's kind of subjectively, but it doesn't seem to take as long to get hot water, say, to the faucet or the shower like it used to, which is great because that always bugged me before how much water I was wasting waiting for hot water to get there. Now, one thing I didn't tell you is that this hot water heater was manufactured in July of 2018. And so I don't know exactly when he put this one in, but we'll say the first of 2019, which means this hot water heater is only five years old. Five years and it was starting to fail. That's kind of ridiculous. In fact, it's probably still under warranty, but it doesn't really matter because I don't have the original receipt for the purchase of it, so I probably can't use the warranty anyway. And I put a lot of that to the water quality that I have here. And what I wasn't able to show you, which I wish I could have, is that bottom element was setting right in that sediment we flushed out of there. That sediment was all the way up to that bottom element, which is about four inches. So that's a lot of sediment in just five years. I mean, some of you probably get 10 plus years and don't have that much. Now, before I show you all the grunge and how much we got out of there. Let me address a couple things that I know is gonna come up in the comments. And the first one is, is, some of you are probably out there thinking, you do not need to flush your hot water heater. This is not necessary. Well, I have to disagree. When I show you how much I got out of there, I definitely have to disagree. And two, since I couldn't show you, but the sediment was all the way up to that bottom element, it needed to be flushed, which means some of you may also be saying, well, you could have just flushed it from the valve. Well, watch the beginning of the video. I had no water coming through it because I don't have a valve that's got a straight open hole through it from which that grudge could be flushed out. So yes, I did have to flush it the way I did, which leads to another comment some of you may have a question is, is why didn't I just replace that? Well, that's a good question. And honestly, I didn't think about it. So I do have plans to replace that. I'm just not gonna do it right now because I don't have to drain my tank to do it because I've got a new heating elements on order and I've got a new anode rod on order. And so I'll have to drain that in order to put those in. And at that time, I'll replace that valve in there with a brass fitting that's got a hole all the way through it. So maybe once a month, I can just open that up, flush some sediment out and be gone. And I won't have to go through all this, which leads me to the next one everybody's gonna be saying is, is oh, that was a waste of time. Time's money. You just spent too much time. I got better things to do. Well, let's look at it. So with filming, it took about five hours. Without filming, it's taken an hour off, but let's leave it at five hours. New hot water heater, if you put it in yourself, electric, is gonna be about 500 bucks. That's $100 an hour. I beg to differ that a lot of you out there are making over $100 an hour, in which case I do think it's well worth it. Now, let's say you can't put one in, you gotta pay somebody to put it in. There's gonna be at least another 200 bucks to have a plumber come out and do it, maybe 300. So now you're at seven to 800 bucks to have a new hot water heater, which makes your hourly rate even higher. So I do say it is definitely worth your time to clean this out, which leads to the last comment I'm gonna get, and that is these tools I use just ruined the inside of that tank, marred it all up and tore it up. Well, maybe, I wouldn't say ruin, but yes, I definitely say that these aren't smooth and gentle, and it probably did scratch the surface. If it is a glass line, although it says that in the instruction manual, it is glass line, I doubt I got a lot of scratches in it. And if it's not glass line and it's metal, and yes, I scratched some of the coating off, but the anode rod's supposed to help take care of some of that. So I'm not real worried because let's say doing this extended the life conservatively three years. That's three years I don't have to worry about that hot water heater. But honestly, I think I'm gonna get way more than that out of it because I've cleaned it out and I know now what to do, say on a monthly or every six months or every yearly basis to help extend the life of it and keep it running, hopefully for 10, 15 years because I mean, it's not leaking. So it's not like I, I raked through that and caused it to corrode through and it's made it leak. Now, don't get me wrong. I have no intentions of thinking I got that hot water heater spotless in there. I know I didn't, but I got it 99% cleaner than it was. But I had a ton of sediment, as you're gonna see, in the bottom of that. Now, this little tool here I made, granted it didn't work because I didn't make it right, but even if I did, it wasn't gonna be worth anything. These two rods here, Definitely, definitely, definitely gonna keep them around. I think it's worth it. So let me show you just how much grunge and what we got out of here. And honestly, I think I've gained at least a gallon of water in my hot water heater by having all this stuff out of here. I might go as bold as say almost two gallons when you see how much comes out of here. I mean, look at all this. Look at all that. But you can't tell me that it's not needed to flush your out water heater out. 
when you get this much stuff out of here. Now this doesn't count for all the fine sediment I didn't catch in my bucket with my paint strainer. I mean, as you see here, see all that red stuff in the bottom of the bucket? I had that in every bucket I dumped. It had a sandy feel when you grabbed a hold of it, which means it's probably just this stuff ground up real fine into like a sandy powder. So again, I beg to differ. I don't care what your argument is. You may be right. I still say it was definitely worth all the time and it was definitely worth doing this to save my hot water heater. Again, I ask, is this definitely not worth it or not? While this took a lot of time, it wasn't hard. It was just tedious. And if you want to see some other easy home repairs and how I did them, click on this playlist right here and you can go see a bunch of easy repairs that you can do to help out at your house. So until next time, happy DIYing.